So we've now been joined by Nick Davies from Print Screen Press. Yes, hello. And uh, you've you've got a, uh, an exhibit in the show. Yes, yeah, upstairs in near Replicants, yeah. And uh, ex- explain a bit what it, what it is. It's, it's it's a font essentially. Is that right? Yes, it it came about during a, an exhibition I did while I was in university a few years ago. Um, it's a font that was made in Tetris, the game. So every character was formed in one game of Tetris. Um, and it's the idea is about what design is. Um, Tetris is a game which you have to deal with what's thrown at you rather than making it from scratch. So it was an idea of we're trying to deal with what we've got rather than making things nice and perfect on a computer to start with. That, that was the, the overall idea of it. And so it exists as a, a font people can download and yeah, use? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a font you can download. Um, not all of the characters on a keyboard are made, um, just because you can't have floating keys on Tetris. Um, but there, there's also a print to go with it, a, three, a, a 3D print, obviously, and then the riser print too, which um, I made on my risograph, which is part of Print Screen Press. So say a bit more about the risograph. Um, it's something that is used a lot more now um, in the arts. Um, it's, it's, it's used like an affordable screen printer, I guess. That's one way of describing it. Um, because you can use a lot of different colours. Um, you can make artists' books or art prints for about a third of the price it would cost to do it on a screen printer, but you've still got a really tactile quality with it. Um, they, they used to be used a lot for um, political parties. I think they still are. There's a colour called Lib Dem Yellow, so <laughs> it, is, it is for that, but it can be used in other ways as well. So the, the colours, the first time I came across it, it just had um, four basic I think it was yellow, red, green, and, and sort of like for commercial organisations, very, very limited range of colours. So yeah, yeah. are these uh, bespoke colours, that, or, or is there now a, no, a wider range? The Riso, the company, they, they've got a colour range of about 36 to 40. Um, so there's, there's, there's a whole, there's, there's, a, there's a huge range, there's about seven different greens. There's fluorescent colours in pink and orange, there's, there's all sorts. Um, getting your hands on a drum for those colours is impossible, but it's there if you can find the, the ways to use it as well. Because you did, or, or were part of a, a Adventures in Riser, which was in the Phoenix walkthrough yeah. gallery. Yeah, um, that was with Oliver Flexman, who did the show here in August. Um, that was my first workshop that I'd done with the with the Rhizo um, and it's, it's something that I really enjoy doing I, I'm going to do more of it as well um, it was an interesting one to, to use the Rhizo for because we didn't do a large run of those prints there was only about five of each which isn't what a risograph's for a risograph's meant to be for over 30 copies really so um, so what, what yeah. do, you, do you have a point of view about the, the number of copies that should be done of something? It should be done. Or could be yeah. done, or what, what do yeah. you feel appropriate? Or, you know? what, it, with the risograph, I like it because you, you can end up, just because of how messy the process is, because it uses wet ink, you can end up with the printer's fingerprint on one or two of the copies, and personally, I still feel that that idea of aura that you've mentioned before... Yeah is still there in risography, whereas it may it may seem like it's not as special, but to me I think it is, and it's more democratic than something like a woodcut can be, because you can produce more of it. I'll just say that this, this, this idea of aura, I've, I've, I mentioned it while we were listening to music early, earlier on, and we, we mentioned it to um, Fol- Volkart Muller, who, who was on the show a, a while ago, yeah. with um, Any City, or any any high street, mm. we, we think about it as any any city. So that in in that show, he was using woodcut, mm. and it was the pub- fantastic. The public could could commission. I'm just sort of just giving a bit of background. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the the public could commission a, a part of that woodcut and have a, a, a their own print of it. And when mm. that happened, I think he did four or five at a time. Mm. Um, and one of the one of the arguments I have heard is that a woodcut is only going to do a good copy on a limited number. Okay. Um, 
but mm. which might be true. I don't. Um, know, yeah, I don't so, know what that so, is. <laughs> do, do join us. Join yeah, in. Yeah, well, they, they wear out, don't they? They get claggy. So what, what it's, it's, it's like with um, quite a lot of um, printing of this sort. Um, the the first few editions um, are crisp and clear. Yeah. And as you start going through um, to twenty, thirty, a hundred, yeah. um, the, the the quality changes. Mm. Now, um, whether that's a good thing or not is is debatable. You might say you like to see the one that's um, comfortably sort of established and run in at about sort of number fifty out of a hundred. You see what I mean? Well, mm. number one <laughs> could be just so sharp it's a, it jars a bit. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, um, I like the mistakes. <laughs> That can come up, and yeah. it happens with risography too, because you only print on a uh, on a really thin screen. After about two hundred, creases might occur, or mm. something else might show up, and it's quite a nice it's quite a nice quirk. It can, as a printer, it can be a nightmare. You don't want it to happen, <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing either. I don't think. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, with with the woodcuts, I think Volkart Mullet Show was was fantastic, and there was. The, or, or I, I, it's a Walter Benjamin thing with the aura, isn't it? And it's about he he thought the artwork was um, it was different from these multiples that were created, you know, in, in reams of cars because it had this aura of the the artist who made it. I agree with him to a point, but I can't see why you can't do both. Be democratic with how many you can spread out and get it as accessible as you can, while also holding on to some aura too. That's my thoughts yeah, on it. Yeah, <laughs> and so with the with the font, if we just stay, start with the font for a minute, you you put that online. Hmm. Do you want to mention the website? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I guess so. It's um the it's the tuba is the name of the website. Um, spelled www dot the hyphen tuba, which is t u b r t t u b e r dot co dot uk, <laughs> which is well. It's like the, the the potato you get in the ground. It's all, the idea of a seed <laughs> right. that you can grow. Right. That's, that's the thought behind it, anyway. Right. <laughs> and so in that, in that case, it's a, uh, there could be any number of downloads of that font, and it could be using any number of documents. Yeah, like a, like a seed. I'd like to see it grow if it could, but um, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a it's a, it's a con- conceptual font, I guess. I like the idea that it could be used, but it probably is never going to get used. It's on the boundary between art and what should be classed as proper design. Design? I think. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much aura is attached to the font, but because of the... I see it as a performative thing, I've had to create that. So I think there's quite a lot of backstory, which yeah. is possibly what aura is, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what the 3D print show holds a lot of, is there's a lot of... There's a lot of aura in some of those works because of how they've become through not just the printing process, which has a lot of materiality about it, but also some of the works are very process-driven, like the, 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 the hand glider. And that, that holds a lot of power for me, even though it's mechanically reproduced. So that's where, that's where the woodcut idea of aura starts to, to, to wilt a little bit for me, because I think it you could expand the idea of what an aura is, possibly. I don't know. 